reminisce, I reminisce. Uh. Yeah. Hey everybody, it's your girl Kim Lo back at it again with this video. And today we have our girl Natty with Kenny. What up? <laughs> you already know she a dope person, personality. I appreciate that, man. So I just want to go, you know, into it. How did you get started with, you know, style and how does the journey been since then? So, wow. Uh, <laughs> so, I like to say my five to nine is me being a style architect and uh, pretty much what I do is build wardrobes for various types of men. I do specialize in men's clothing. And um, what actually got me into that was after I graduated uh, from the University of Pittsburgh, okay. I went there on a basketball scholarship. So my whole life was basketball. Like either I thought I was playing overseas or doing right. something else. I went to college, goofed around. Right. Yeah. And then I was like, shit, like I'm at the find a job. So I came back to Philly and uh, started working for a company called Mitchell and Ness. And that really opened uh, my whole world to like the hip hop community okay. and you know certain stylists will come in and grab things for artists and I'm just like shit that like that's what I want to do. Right. People also always compliment me about my style. It's never something I really thought about. It was just like in college and then moving back to Philly it's like every day walking down the street getting a compliment. And then um, my very uh, first client he said listen I have, a, I have a gig to go to can you style me? It was the first $500 I made wow. in two hours, that's dope. That's dope. And, I, and I never looked back. Um, so that's pretty much how I got into styling. Okay. And, you know. Aside from men's, um, where do you also specialize in women's at all? I, I could give advice for oh, women. Okay. Like I know what I'd like to see a woman in, right. um, <laughs> but I wouldn't necessarily say I would. I would take a woman and style her because it's very intricate. I don't dress in women's clothing, right. okay. so I can't even like. Uh, really relate when we're in the women's section unless you want to get 20 pieces and try them all on right. and I whatever best reaction I have, <laughs> I have. Uh, but I do specialize in men because I'm a woman in menswear that's like a okay. thing now um, it was kind of cool that I was doing that before it was a thing uh, but um yeah mostly mostly guys okay yeah. and I you know I, like, I, like I told you I've been uh, following you for a long time you know I always you know admired your style you Thank know you. the way you walk talk everything you do you do everything so Tell me where your style actually originated from and what inspired you to keep wow. going with that. Um, I'll be honest, my style originated from the bread. Like Oh for real? Yeah, like wow. when I when I when I when I was growing up. It wasn't a lot of like women who and though I don't think she's come out to be outward like LGBT, right. but yeah, if you, unless you're blind. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And just Pretty the way obvious. she dressed and the way she was accepted, I was like, oh, can this this can actually do something. So I never forget it. My first outfit, I was at school, it was a party. I went to what was that at the time? American Eagle. Oh, I got me a brown yeah, was, a brown check track jacket, <laughs> uh light uh, uh, uh denim jeans mm -hmm. and the Adidas 2.0s. I don't know if anybody <laughs> remembers them. They was I all brown. <laughs> they was all brown and leather. And that night, I got more dances than everybody. Wow. All the guys, all the basketball players. They were probably hating on the low. And it was probably the first time I was really, like, genuinely being myself. Okay. And I ain't, I never turned back then. So it's funny that I, I forget a lot of stuff. But um, yeah, so that, 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 that was, like, when I, like, decided I was never wearing women's clothing again in history. Dope. Yeah. And I also see that you work with Frank Knuckles. Tell me yeah. how that is. Like, wow, that's that's amazing. Frank Knuckles is, is a great guy. Like, um... A former percussionist of the roots, and now is uh, taking a journey into building his own production company. Okay. He's going to be doing some amazing things coming up. But I met him at Mitchell and Us. Okay. You know really? what I mean? And I always kind of took uh, the extra step forward. So if I knew someone was coming, I would set up a dressing room for them, all the jerseys, their sizes, so they would know, like, oh, this person took the time out. And um, he, like, I was making custom hats at the time with my okay. brand Creative Players, and he came and he caught, like, six of them. You know what I mean? I was like, oh shit, like this guy's cool. Yeah. <laughs> and I was working in uh, Mitchell and S, but it was inside of Ubit. Okay. So I was getting all the sneakers. I was, right. I had all the hookups, sneaker villa. And I said, wow, I can make money like off of getting people sneakers. Exactly. And uh, he became a client of mine then and still is like six years later. So shout out to Frank Knuckles. That's what's up. So tell me about like, you know, you do so much. You're running I do, man. Just I do. So tell me how that is with balancing so much work and also yeah. styling other people. So, like, in the beginning of the uh, interview, I said, uh, me being a style architect is my mm -hmm. five to nine. Oh, so, so you'll, hear, you'll hear people say my nine to five, my five to nine. Mm -hmm. um, recently, I coined this term. I listen to a lot of podcasts, mm -hmm. and even though L.A. Reid is kind of, like, in a hot spot, right. he really defined what it is that I am. I'm a corporate entrepreneur. So, mm -hmm. I like working for big companies, knowing mm -hmm. my check is going to come right. on time. Right. No, ain't going to be no flu gazing. I ain't got to <laughs> run after you for my money. 
and I lost like also like making impacts on a big scale so okay. even doing what I did at Mitchell and Ness starting our pop-up shop now they've continued to do them across the country I met so many people and there were so many different avenues I was meeting like artists some um, engineers architects and I was in some way shape or form helping all these people okay. so I was like all right let me let me let me see what I can do so I actually started creative players at as, as a creative platform for myself I knew I was going to be venturing from Mitchell and Ness uh, soon, and I was like, I don't want people to just know me as the Mitchell and Ness girl. So right. how can I like identify yeah, and brand yourself. myself? Right. So on, on my platform, Creative Players, um, pretty much, um, if I would say, if you would say, what do you want Creative Players to be? I want it to be one of the biggest creative agencies that you've heard of. So if you have to get certain shit done, like, yo, Nat, I want to interview you, but I need a dope spot to get it done at. We on the rooftop, look at the dudes, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, just being a Philadelphia native, knowing the city, having a really good uh, uh, contact list and building relationships, I find myself being able to do a lot of different things. How I balance it, though, is um, just making certain things a priority. Okay. So right now, I'm a, I'm a program director for a new nightclub coming to Philly. I call myself a corporate entrepreneur. Hey, why not? They literally <laughs> hired me to make sure that our club stays authentically Philly. And I found certain um, jobs in the city that allow me to do that. Whether I'm with them for five years, six months, eight months, um, okay. you know, that that's pretty much how I balance it. Just making, making sure what's a priority and then also just really making sure I always do what I love to do. Right. That way I can, I can go do a nine to five and still be happy because I'm not going home like, right. not yeah. doing shit. I'm working on my style clients and doing shit like that. So. Okay. And with everything that you've done through the years, how, how has that impacted you as a personal girl? Yo, it's, it's, um, it's impacted me in a great way because no matter if you're working with the top celebrity or you're working with someone, someone will say on the lower level, mm -hmm you got to be able to adapt and treat everybody with respect. Right. You know, I've been treated bad by, I've been treated bad, I haven't been yeah, paid on time. About with the, with Man, like, especially with hiring celebrities. Like, okay. you don't get paid on time. They do, they want to do the run around. Right. They want you to do your work for free, which is okay sometimes because it, exposure can be priceless. Right. Um, but I found like, even a lot of the guys that I style, I stop chasing celebrity clients and I do the everyday guy that needs to look good for his position and they treat you like gold they invite you to the boat houses they give you the keys to the beach house you know and those, those are the people that i really like to work with some humble grounded people and that's kept me grounded you know what i mean so a lot of times you can kind of get immersed in like that celebrity lifestyle you ain't getting paid like them you ain't got the house like them but sometimes people have that like ego it's like bro you gotta go back to west philly bro i don't give a fuck who you in a picture with sorry if my cursing offends anyone no, it's fine. i'm a person but you know what i mean so just realizing that everybody has something to add to my career has allowed me to be the person I am. Okay, and with, like being a Philly, you know, like, I always mention this, like working with other, you know, people from Philly, has that, has their egos gotten away with what you do also? Because I know in Philly, like, not a lot of love is shown, but, you know, working yeah, with Philly like, has that, you know, like, still Phil motivated you. Philly is an interesting place, and one valuable lesson I learned from Mitchell and S um, that's kept me out of a lot of trouble, that if you're not useful, you're useless. And a lot of people that I thought were my friends were just using me. Which, if I wasn't thinking that they were my buddies, we could have either done really good business or could have flourished into something else. But when you kind of put that friend stigma on people, they can do things that are like, throw you off. So I did have a lot of experiences because I, I didn't know how to have a friend quit category and have a business category. Um, but I would say for the most part, like, success is a revolving door. So, like, now I have some people that, like, did me dirty, talk shit about me, and now I literally have to find every creative in Philly to come get a check. You know what I mean? So, I've been hitting up, you know what I mean? I got, I got a budget. I got I can give people money. And so, it's like, yeah, I have met people that did dumb shit, but, like, at the end of the day, it is what it is, it is, what it is and karma will come back, and... Some of those people I've still had to reach out to because okay. I respect their craft. I respect it. So you, you, you got to. You got cool. to. So, you know, you got to just let that shit, like, yeah, rush yeah, off. Yeah. I, I have tons of stories. I ain't going to get into them. But I, one thing I could just say to people is just, like, watch how you treat people, man. Because that guy you're treating like shit, you he can have a bag <laughs> for you. <laughs> and they might not be as nice as me. I, I guarantee they won't be as nice as me. Right. But, yeah.
it was um so you know like I said with so much going on like, also, you got a beautiful girlfriend yeah shout like, out she's always here supporting you yeah I, she so do cool. man so like you know I mean, what like the love relationship and also everything that she's doing while you know her being here you being busy yeah, I man. know how that can be I do I've dated <laughs> all kind of women shout out to all my exes hope y'all are doing great um my girl is just like super supportive it was very important finding somebody who has their own life right, right? so you know she uh, is an entrepreneur she has her own salon um, you know what I mean she works a lot you know what I mean but finding ways to like support her and things outside of like social media or outside of relationships we just have a good time kicking back watching power and shit oh, that's cool. and you gotta like and I see y'all went on vacation. How was that? That shit was <laughs> lit. That, yeah, she took me to my... Happy belated birthday, by the way. Yeah. 30, 30, you know? 30. I ain't running away from it. I'm, I'm running towards it. But, um, yeah, she took me to Miami, and then we went to the islands. And it was it's just great to have somebody that, that's thoughtful and would do something like that for you. So, um, I ain't got no relationship advice for y'all. So, we, we this is my longest relationship, two and a half years. So oh, that's dope. Okay. I ain't got, no, I ain't yeah, got I no advice for y'all. <laughs> and I also see you work with kids. How was yeah, it like, yeah. working with different, like, top creators? I, I, I don't know Kid personally, yeah. but just following her, I see she's yo, really kid, she yo, the top. I met Kid 2013 on the second floor that's of Mitchell and Ness. As a matter of fact, yep. yep. On the second <laughs> floor of Mitchell and Ness. Her and Steve's the Great I met. And they were still okay. in high school. And they came in, they were just super, super dope. They, the kid wasn't even, I didn't even know she rapped. <laughs> you know what I mean? I would work up with another artist at the time, and she was like, yo, I, I want to be on this wave. Like, I, I want to do videography, photography. So I first knew her as a photographer. Okay. Then I would have these freestyle sessions in the in the boutique, and she hopped in the session. And I was like, what the? F-? Right, right. So ever since then, man, we, we've been working, and she's been growing and honing herself as an artist. And you know what I mean? Um, it's amazing working with her because she does everything from videos to I photography, see, yeah. from creating her own music. You don't got to hold her hand to do nothing. So when she comes back with work, it allows me to do what I do best, whether okay. it's market it, place it, let the right people know about it. And I think that's important these days and being like, everyone talks about 360 deals, but you need to be like a 360 artist. Right. Like you need to be able to do yeah, any right. and everything. So okay. um, yeah, really dope working with Kid. Shout out to Kid the Great. We got a party coming up August 19th. Oh, I seen it, yeah. So go August to my Instagram, Creative Players. We're turning up. We're shooting. I swear the dopest song. This might be the song. She go on. Go on my Instagram. Check out the information. Come through. So what's your best advice, you know, being, like I said, so much. What's the best yeah. advice that you can give to anybody that's, you know, doing what you do or just doing anything in general? Wow. Uh, I think my best advice, man, is to just, Get out of your phone. Like, just just get out of your phone. Like, that shit ain't real. Now, there are people that make a good living off their social media, but you can tell who those people are. Like, but at the end of the day, you see Mayor Christie. Y'all don't see him, but we looking at Mayor ex-Mayor Christie up here. And these people are making six figures and seven figures. And none of them got Instagrams. So you got you to gotta get out of your phone, and you got to interact with people because... I've seen so many people lose opportunity because they're bigger, they're, they're not as big as their Instagram when you meet them. And you're like, who is this person? Like, you know, so try to develop yourself off of social media. And then, like, my second advice is, yo, treat everybody how you would treat your mom. Unless you don't like your mom, you treat her like shit, <laughs> fuck you anyway. But, like, treat everybody how you would treat your mom with courtesy and respect. And that it, it'll definitely come back to you tenfold. I, I can say for a fact it's come back to me in that way. I gotta say, this is one of the dopest interviews I've had. Really? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Johnny was saying, drinking, yeah, beer when she came in. You know, I had all about the vibes. You know, it's all about the vibes. It's all about the vibes. You know what I'm saying? So, y'all already know where to follow me. Like, but, but first of all, let's just, what? Tell me what to follow you. Follow Creative Players. It's at Creative Players. Again, you know, we are a a, a a creative agency. If you have anything that you want to get done and you need somebody that can get it done, call me. I can't even list out everything that I can do. But I know in Philly, it's a lot of smoke and mirrors, you know. So just if you need something creative done, uh, uh, give me a call and we get it done. You know, if you need an interview, like, you know, you don't want your producer dancing in the video. Yeah, listen, you, know? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you can follow me on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, you know, everywhere at the Kenlo Show. Hell you yeah. Know. That's all, folks. Yeah.